Hello guys, welcome to online web tutor presented by Profood Extensions team. I am Sanjay. We are learning REST API development in PHP using JWT. This is our part 19. Inside this video session guys, we will see about JWT payload parameters detail. In the last video, successfully we had generated about JWT token. So if I back to Postman. Now this is our login API URL and inside this URL we have passed our parameters right here like email and the password inside body and successfully we had generated about our JWT token as we can see here. So if we copy this JWT back to Chrome inside this JWT.io and inside debugger if I scroll down and if we paste our JWT inside this area now as we can see that this JWT contains about the header something called type equal to JWT and algorithm equal to HS256. So what basically it is? How can we know that where it is this algorithm will be used or where JWT token has picked this algorithm type? So to understand that if we back to code editor, go to vendor, open a firebase php-jwt, src and jwt.php. Why we have opened this file? Because in the last video we have included this autoload.php to use this class. By using this class we have accessed about jwt and the encode function as we can see here. So go inside jwt.php and inside this file, if we search about the static method called encode, so control F and let's type encode and as we can see that this is our static method encode. So that's why we have used scope resolution operator. So back to class. Now inside this encode, we have a third parameter right here as we can see that. So inside this third parameter, basically we have to pass about something called algorithm type. So inside our previous video, we have passed only two parameters, something our payload information and all about the secret key. These are the two parameters we have passed. Third parameter is default is taken as, as we can see, HS256. But if we want to change about the algorithm, so go inside about parameters structure about this method. Now inside this ALG, indicates about algorithm type. So supported algorithms we have called HS256, HS384, HS512 and many more. So instead of using this default algorithm, we can change by giving our third parameter inside JSON encode. So let's say that if we want to use called HS512 algorithm, so we have to copy that, go to encode method and Right here, by using our comma here, we have to pass in inside single quotes and this is our called algorithm type. So if we save all these changes for this login API, back to Postman, again hit send button and if we copy about this JWT, go inside JWT IO and if I put about the algorithm or JWT inside this box, now as we can see that algorithm type is successfully changed. So this is how we can change about the algorithm type inside header of JWT and the type should be JWT is always it's a default value. Now let's understand about the payload information. So if I scroll down, now inside payload, inside our last video, we had discussed about ISS, IAT and BF, EXP, audience and the data. So let's get summarized about each parameters in detail, what basically they are. So if we back to slide and move to next tab, here I have written about small statements of about each parameters. ISS stands for issued by, generally host name we can specify or any informations if you want then put inside this ISS parameter. Actually we have generated our token at localhost server 
So that's why I have put about localhost inside this ISS value. Let's say that your domain name something stands for abc.com then abc is your ISS number. Or also if you want to specify about the honor name, let's say that def is the honor of abc.com then I want to specify about the honor name so then def in that case we can specify. So if we back to JWTIO, so inside this ISS, successfully we have stored about local host value. But if we change about the owner name, we have to go inside this code editor and only we have to change about ISS value, what we have in sliced inside previous video. Now in the next parameter, we can understand about IAT, it means issued at, so back to a slide. So this is IAT, it stands for issued at. It basically represents that at which time we have created. Simply, it will be the current time. So when we type or when we click on send button, it means we are requesting about login API and by using this email password, we are authenticating user and generating our token. So it will be the default current time what we, ha what we are getting inside that inside login api so back to our code editor so issued at will be the default current time at what it is going on so that's why we have used php function call time back to slides now in the next parameter we can understand about aud it represents for the audience means our token is going to be used for which type of users let's say that we have an application and inside that application we have several types of user like admin super admin let's say about normal users about our let's say support users ticket users as well as we have something called customers so which type of audience basically we are going to represent with that token so we need to specify inside here inside this key so in our case simply we have written about the statement called my users now in the next parameter we can understand about nbf it stands for not before means after a certain time interval we can use that else before we are not able to use it what basically it means it means that let's say that we have generated this token at this time but when we are going to use this token inside another API is then we can say that this API valid after 10 second or 20 second so it means that the next API will have to wait up to 20 seconds before using it. So we need to set about the time intervals. So if we back to code editor, now this is the current time at which we have generated our token. But here we have said that the next APIs will have to access this token after generating time which means after 10 seconds. Before 10 seconds, if it will access then we have some error that token is invalid or something else we will see inside next video so back to a slide now next we have called exp something expiration time it simply represents that this will be the expiration time of the generated token if we don't set this value then it will be valid for default time period something for one hour if we back to code detail so inside previous video, we have successfully set about exp parameter after 30 seconds. It means that after generated time, this token will expire after 30 seconds. After 30 seconds, let's say that we are using it, then we have some error something called token is expired or token has been expired. So all these about messages concept we will see about in the next video when we use inside another APIs about this JWT token. Back to a slide. Now in the next parameter we have finally called data. It contains another information or let's say some user data. So back to our code editor. So inside this data, we have successfully stored about ID, name and the email. This is all about user information. 
So after making all these parameters, we have successfully passed inside this JWT encode and this is all about payload info and it's successfully encoded by using our secret key what we have written inside this third parameter. So finally we have discussed about the great details means great parameters detail about this payload info. Back to JWTIO. Now finally about lastly we have called signature. So inside this signature as we have seen about the first parameter is the concatenation string of header and the payload. Only we need to about know is something about the secret key what we are passing as a second parameter. So successfully inside this encode method, if we back to our code editor, inside here as we can see that we also passing about secret key and this is the secret key as we have defined here and this is the secret key basically used by our signature part. So all happening here about header, we are setting about algorithm type, payload info, what we are preparing about these parameters and about signature, what we are writing as a secret key. So by combining this header, payload and signature, we are just preparing a, a JWT token. So this is all about our parameters detail of JWT. So inside this video session guys, if you went out, then please drop your comment. I will give my reply as soon as possible. So for this video session guys, thank you for watching and have a great day.